360 deals, I mean, the concept of 360 is it's circular, it's all, it's encompassing. Um, the evolution of the 360 deal came about within the past five years, I would say. And it came about as a direct result of the fact that record companies were losing money. They've been losing money for the last five to 10 years. Single, sometimes double digit declines in sales and revenue every single year. So as a result of that, the record companies in order to survive began to look at how can we one cut expenses so a lot of staff layoffs a lot of consolidation a lot of mergers um, a lot of ro roster cuts with their artists slashing of budgets for recording slashing of promotional and marketing budgets that they would have normally spent on lavish parties or radio promotion so that's one way to boost the bottom line you cut expenses the other way, obviously, is you increase income. They weren't increasing income by the increase of sales because sales of the physical CDs were declining as sales on the internet were exploding and they hadn't yet captured uh, the, the, the opportunities for monetizing internet sales. So they started looking to the artists and they were saying to the artists, particularly new artists, that they were investing hundreds of thousands of millions of dollars in developing new careers and they were saying, you know what? we're spending a lot of money on you. Nobody's ever heard of you or really cared about buying anything from you before we spent this risk capital to make you a star. But we don't want to be limited anymore to just getting revenue from sales of records. So you're going out as a result of our risk, our investment, and you are now having a career that can then bring you great financial rewards from touring, from publishing, from the writing of your material and the ownership of your copyrights, for successful gold and platinum artists, obviously, merchandising is a very lucrative area. Film and television opportunities come, book deals come. So what the record companies kind of did slowly by surely, one by one by one, and now almost all, all the majors are doing it, and quite a few of the significant independents are doing it. They're saying, we will invest the money as we always have. We will continue to have the same contractual relationship and economic and financial arrangements that we always had as it relates to the sale of your records. However, now we want a piece of the pie that you're enjoying from our risk capital. And therefore, the record companies are demanding a percentage profit participation of varying percentages. Could be as low as 5%, could be as high as 25%, could be on gross, could be on net. That's all subject to negotiation, but the essence is, is that they are now sharing as income partners in all the various areas related to the entertainment industry that an artist is now receiving. It's, it's very lopsided because a brand new artist who doesn't have a sales or track record or history of making money and they're not successful yet has very little of any leverage. The only leverage you really have coming in the door is if other companies are interested simultaneously in hiring and, si and signing you, then you can do a bidding war and you can go then one company against the other for the best terms that you can squeeze out of them. If that's not the case, and that's only the case in a small fraction of the time, the new artist has very little leverage, and for an attorney who represents the creative talent side of the equation, it hurts, it sucks, it's, it's just like, you know, because when you look at the numbers, what's really happening is the artist is getting squeezed and squeezed and squeezed, and at the end of the day, yeah, the record company is investing risk capital. They've always been doing that, and only now they're looking to share in other areas because they're losing money. But traditionally, the artist has been in the studio. They're the ones that have to go out and they have to work. They have to promote the record. They have to, you know, stay up late, get up early, get on a bus, sleep in hotel rooms all around the world, eat bad food. So they're the ones that actually have to physically work the record, be out on tour, do all the kinds of interviews and promotional activities, all of which are really unpaid most of the time, to bring value to that record and to that song. And now you have a record company saying, pay me 25 or even 20% of your net profits from touring. You have a manager who's saying, I want 15 to 20% of your gross. You have a booking agency who's taken 10% of your gross from the booking. You may have a business manager. If you're an established artist, you do have a business manager who is probably getting 3 to 5% of your gross of all the money that comes in. Your attorney also is on a percentage basis quite often, but not all the time, but when we are, Sometimes it's the same as a business manager, 5% cut. So by the time you finish on a typical date, a live engagement, an artist may be paying out as much as 70% of the earnings that they're making from that gig, which means they take home 30%, which is not a significant sum of money, 
if you know you're not making fifty, sixty, seventy, a hundred thousand dollars a night. The three hundred and sixty relationship will last for the time of the deal. So if they're doing a four, five, six album deal, then the three hundred and sixty and all the other provisions that are in the contract, because it's just one of many provisions, are going to apply typically for the entire length of the contract. Now, however. As you go from album to album, assuming you're going from album to album because you're successful, that success is going to give you the leverage that you didn't have when you first came in as a new artist. And that leverage that you now have to renegotiate for an improved deal will probably give you a little bit better participation on the 360 side. I doubt very seriously if it will completely eliminate it because, you know, once the foot is in the door, it doesn't necessarily get completely removed. You only remove one toe at a time. Um, so what will happen is, you know, you go gold, you go platinum. Instead of 15% participation, you may be successful in reducing that to a half or a quarter, and that puts more money in your pocket. You may be able to put certain benchmarks and triggers in so that they only participate when a certain sales level is achieved on the record to show that they're really pushing the record and getting behind it financially to support its promotion. There are a lot of other nuances and things that you can inject into the clause to make it a little bit more palpable, but absent the leverage and the success, you're kind of stuck for the ride.